Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, let's take a look at the Nano PC T6 from Friendly Alec. The Nano PC T6 is a high-performance edge computing SBC powered by the Rockchip RK35AA SOC. On this small chip, there is an octa-core CPU with 4M Cortex-A76 cores and 4M Cortex-A55 cores. Besides, there are also a high-performance 6TOPS NPU and the multimedia processor supporting up to 8K video encoding and decoding. The Nano PC T6 have four options with different choice of RAM, eMMC, and SPI storage. The highest configuration is 16GB of RAM, 256GB of eMMC, and SPI North flat solder which will cost additional $49 US dollar from the $100 US dollar pay price. Speaking of the I.O., the Nano PC T6 comes with two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, an M.2 M key connector for NVMe LSD, an M.2 E key connector for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and a mini PCIe connector for 4G and 5G module. Something new on the Nano PC T6 is the HDMI input port. It supports 4K 60p and is good for computer vision and image processing application. Besides the HDMI input, you can use the 2 Mi PCSI port with a compatible camera module. For video output, the Nano PC T6 had two HDMI ports. One support AK Ultra HD at 60Hz and the other supports 4K 60p. Still, you can use the two Mi PDSi ports for video output at the same time. Now, let's disassemble the case and take a closer look at the PCB components. There are two M.2 connectors on the board, each of them had a different size. One is M.2 2230 E key PCIe 2.1 connector for wireless module and the other one is an M.2 2280s M key PCIe Gen 3 X4 for NVMe LSD. Next to it, we have the Mi Piece DSi connector. The Nano PC T6 I have come with 8GB of RAM and 64GB of eMMC. We can see that the eMMC chip is from 4Cs and there is no SPI flash solder. At the bottom of the board, there is the IR receiver. This receiver only support 38 kHz frequency, so make sure that you get the right remote control. Let's take out the PCB from the casing to see the other side of the PCB. Right in the center of the PCB, there is the Rockchip RK35AA SOC. Next to it are the two DDR4X RAM chips from Samsung. Well, there are more connectors at this side. Let's talk about them one by one. On the right side, we have the mini PCIe connector. Even though the name is PCIe, this connector only supports USB bursts on the 4G LTE module. Next to it, there is the micro SIM card slot. Down below, there is the micro SD card slot, the mushroom buttons, and the power buttons. The Nano PC T6 is now equipped with a USB Type-C connector. This port supports all the functions of a typical USB Type-C port, plus the ability to output video up to 4K 60p. Besides USB Type-C, we also have a USB 3.0 Type-A for data transfer. Next to it, on the left, is the 40-pin GPIO header. Just like all the Nano Pi SBC, we have SPI, URAT, I2C, BMWs, I2S, and GBO on the pins. Here we have three FFC connectors. One of it is MIPI DSI for DSI display, and the other two are MIPI CSI for camera module. Next to it, there is the reset button and the two pin RTC battery connector. This is to power the HYM A563 TS RTC module for real time clock. We also have the 5 volt fan connectors and the microphone connector, 
next to the mini PCIe connector. Let's take a look at this side of the PCB. From left to right, we have a 12-volt DC socket to power on the board, a 3-pin URAT debug header, a 2-pin power on mod selection, 2 HDMI out, 1 HDMI in, and 2 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet port. Now, I'm going to install the Cactel's EC25E LG module to the mini PCIe connector, install the Realtex RTL AA22CE wireless module to the M.2 connector, and power on the Nano PC T6 with a 12 volt 2 amp power supply. Let's check out what do we have. Since the Nano PC T6 only have one USB Type-A port, I need a USB hub to connect the mouse and the keyboard. The Nano PC T6 comes with Ubuntu pre-installed. We can see that the EC25E is out to configure with Ubuntu and I'm able to enable the mobile network with just a few clicks. Unfortunately, the speed I got is not really fast. It was around 4 MPBS download and 26 MPBS upload. There could be something wrong with my telco or the antennas, but let's leave it for another video. The Realtex RTL AA22CE was out to configure as well, and I am able to connect to the Wi Fi right on the first boot. The speed is better. Using speedtest.net on Chrome, I got 467 MPBS download and 319 MPBS upload. The speed is more or less the same with fast.com. With a 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet port, I got 1132 MPBS download and 495 MPBS upload. With fast.com, the speed went up to 1.2 Gigabit per second. I run a quick speed test of the eMMC module with HD pump. The speed is not very high. It is 297 MB per second, but I call it acceptable for an eMMC module. Playback is smooth on youtube.com if you are using Firefox browsers. There is no frame rough, but I was unable to get 2K or 4K resolution. The high gate resolution available is only 1080p. OpenGL works, but it is not working on Firefox. Because of this, I have to switch over to Chrome for the WebGL Aquarium test. I got a stable 60 FPS playback with 1000 fishes and is reduced to 27 FPS with 5000 fishes. However, there are screens blinking during playback and I'm not sure if it is because of the browsers or the GPU limitation. I also checked out youtube.com playback on Chrome and it were worse. The maximum resolution I got is 720p no matter what I try. Alright, that is a quick overview of the Nano PC T6. I believe that right now, Friendly Alex should have released new OS to fix the issue I got in this video, but let's check out in another video. In the next videos, I'm going to show you how to install OpenWRTs or Friendly WRTs on the Nano PC T6. Together, we will check out the routing performance of the Ethernet as well as the wireless performance of the Rautex RTL AA22CE's wireless module. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.